This is a surprising benefit of the most important compound in your body. Hey, Wellness Warrior, I'm Dr. Nick Sorowski, and that incredibly important compound is vitamin D. I'm gonna share with you why you need to take vitamin K2 with it, how much we need, and the top symptoms to look out for for a vitamin D deficiency. So let's go ahead and dive right in. And the first big fact that nobody talks about is that vitamin D is not a vitamin at all. It is a hormone. And what happens is that when the sunlight is hitting the cholesterol in your skin, it produces vitamin D. Now this is so cool because this is the only nutrient that your body is actually capable of producing. And it's critically important. Vitamin D is found in every cell in your body and is absolutely necessary for a proper immune response. It's necessary in order to help you feel well. It's necessary for you to have proper energy. It's necessary to reduce inflammation. And studies show that vitamin Vitamin D at sufficient levels can reduce cancer by 75%. So you're going to find out here as we talk about this that this is one of the most simplistic things you can do to dramatically improve your quality of life. Let's go ahead and talk about vitamin D versus D3. Now, which one should you take? Well, you wanna be taking the active form vitamin D3. And the reason for this is because studies show that you can actually get two times the bioavailability and increase the amount of vitamin D in your body twice as fast by taking vitamin D3. So if you're ever left with an option to take vitamin D or D3, you always wanna go with the D3. Now, the next number Probably number one question that people ask me is, what about K2? Is it important to make sure that you're taking vitamin K2 when you take your D3? I can't stress to you enough how critically important this is to make sure you're taking vitamin K2 with your D3. And the reason for this is because if you're taking high amounts of D3, as it's increasing the calcium in your body, you want that calcium to go to your bones. You do not want that calcium to go to your arteries or even your organ systems. And what happens if you are not taking K2 with the D3, this calcium can start to calcify your arteries and even your organ system. So K2 is going to make sure that the calcium goes to the right place. It goes to the bones. And this is critically important. So what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description to the vitamin D3 K2 combo that we use because the other thing that is important to understand about K2 is that we want to be taking MK7, this is a long chain form of vitamin K2. It is going to be the best when taking vitamin D3. And I want to add that when you look at studies, what they show is that you can more efficiently increase your vitamin D levels in your blood when you're taking it with vitamin K2. So it helps the bioavailability as well. Now, can vitamin D come from food? Well, now we talked about vitamin D coming from the sun. And one of the big problems with vitamin D coming from the sun is that nobody spends enough time in the sun anymore and getting sunlight on their skin. And most jobs are in the home anymore. Most jobs are working from a desk. You're not outside, maybe like our ancestors were. So can we get it from food in a little bit of sunlight? Well, unfortunately, food is a very poor source of vitamin D, and the best food sources are actually fish, and you'd have to eat a lot of it in order to get adequate amounts of vitamin D in your system. So if we look at what the best foods are for vitamin D, we're looking at fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. Now, I don't know about you, but I do not eat these foods daily, and so therefore, they are not going to be a great source of vitamin D for me. I don't like to count on food, and I also have found through my blood work and understanding my lifestyle that I cannot get enough sunlight, especially living in a colder climate, to actually give me adequate amounts of vitamin D from the sunlight. So now let's talk about top symptoms of a deficiency. The top things that we want to look out for is going to be fatigue, lack of energy, and also pain and discomfort in aches, okay? This is a good sign of inflammation as well. And vitamin D, as we said, fights inflammation. Now, as we look at these top symptoms, it's important to understand that the most scientific way to determine if you have a vitamin D deficiency is going to be to test for it. Now, I'm here to tell you that testing for vitamin D is easier than ever before. In fact, we actually use in my clinic these little testing kits, and what you do is you put a little 
pin prick in the end of your finger, you put a few little dabs of blood on a test card, you send it into the lab, and then they will tell you whether you're vitamin D deficient or not. It's very simple, anybody can do it. It's done right in the comfort of your home, it's inexpensive. So I'll put a link to that as well, because if you're just looking for symptoms, there's a good chance you're gonna miss the mark. Now, the next thing that is incredibly important to talk about is how much, because what has been shown is that most people are deficient, most people don't have sufficient amounts in order to actually help them fight off disease in different conditions, and most people, when supplementing with vitamin D, aren't taking nearly enough. So this is a pretty big topic. I did a whole video discussing how much you actually need. I recommend you watch this video right here.